Good evening. Welcome to Cerulean Arts. Um, tonight we have uh, Amanda Mosley, and she's going to talk about her Cerulean Collective Exhibition, which is on view through October 8th. Hello, Amanda. Hi, Michael and Tina, I guess. <laughs> yep, Tina's working the camera. Yeah, she's got the camera. <laughs> so we're heading into your show. Um, please tell us about it, this group of work. Yeah, so this group of work is a little bit of uh, some old, well, old stuff from last summer. Um, and then also some newer things that I did um, this summer. The one that Tina is zooming in on now, Nest, actually was from last summer. Um, but um, but yeah, these are that's a sienna type with Van Dyke Brown, as is um, Corinthians, which she's getting a little closer to. So the sienna type uh, emulsion you apply first uh, because it's a non it's it's an iron based photographic medium. Uh, so it doesn't need to be fixed um, the same way like a silver print needs to be fixed. Uh, but then the Van Dyke brown, which are the brown parts of the, the photo, well, the image, I should say, uh, those need to be fixed in um, a salt solution. So they go on next. So how did you come to work in that process? I did a lot of alternative photo process uh, you know, things in college, I always really liked it. And I think the cyanotype and Van Dyke processes together look really beautiful. Uh, I really love the, the yes. brown and, and blue uh, together, um, you know, and just with those two simple uh, tones, I feel like there's an uh, endless, you know, amount of possibilities as far as image making go. And yeah, so this image, um, it's a it's a graphite drawing of a, a shell over top of uh, a cyan, a little bit of a cyanotype. Um, you know, for whatever reason, I think that paper was treated with a little bit of something. Usually I use paper that doesn't have any sizing or anything in it, but I kind of liked the unexpected uh, blue that came out. Uh, but the image itself didn't come out. Uh, so, uh, I had been working on a lot of uh, shell drawings this summer in my sketchbook, and I decided to start to do some of those on um, bigger, you know, more public pieces of paper. This is another sienna type. Uh, and so depending on how bright the sun is, you know, how the, the light, the quality of the light affects how uh, the exposure. So do you do it, the exposure in the sunshine? Yeah, so these things are coated in my house. You don't have to be as careful as you would be with, uh, you know, silver based processes. I mean, I generally like coat, I coat the paper in my dining room because it's, it's shaded, it's not in direct sunlight. And once the emulsion is dry, I take it outside to expose it. Uh, and depending on, you know, what kind of a day it is affects the exposure. So the, the lighter blues are generally from overcast days, um, days where the, the sun wasn't as bright or maybe was obscured by clouds or something. Um, or if I make the, the cyanotype either early in the day or late in the day, so the, the light isn't quite as so how do right. you get the imagery on the plate? So I, these are more like photograms. Uh, so I put down real uh, flowers that I press and uh, objects. Uh, and I like layering stuff over top of uh, the cyanotype. So the, the shell images on this one are, they're graphite, I, I drew them you know, from observation. Uh, and, uh, you know, this one, I'm pretty sure this one I did, yeah. So sometimes I use uh, a plexiglass, um, you know, sheet as sort of like a, a mask. And that's one of the ones I used, plexiglass versus just putting down an object. Uh, so with the plexiglass images, I 
generally paint some sort of resist to block out the sunlight, like, you know, acrylic paint or um, just something dark to, to block it out. Um, so the, the spots that are blocked out are going to print off, like they're just going to be white or light blue. And then the stuff that uh, is exposed directly to sunlight is going to turn blue, you hope. Uh, and yeah, so this is the dandelion image. Uh, I, I think dandelions are beautiful, <laughs> although a lot of people don't uh, feel the same way. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually 18 different species of uh, dandelions, and I just love the juxtaposition of their, uh, you know, their sharp leaves, but they've got such fluffy flowers. <laughs> you have, do you have them on your farm? Yeah, we have a lot of dandelions because they're good for the soil. They're good uh, for livestock, uh, you know, even though there, a lot of people say that they're weeds, they're actually naturalized for the most part in the United States. And these are some, your material, does it come from your farm? It does, yeah. So almost everything that I do comes from my farm. Uh, you know, the cyanotypes, uh, you know, I make the emulsion here. Uh, I also, you know, use flowers from our farm and uh, the garden to uh, make the images. I use, you know, the animals that live with us as my models. I've got one of our kittens right here. Ah, so that, <laughs> wait, let me uh, spot, spotlight that just to make sure people see. There's... <laughs> this is John, John, yeah. <laughs> right now we're having kind of a kitten overload. Uh, it's a long kitten season. And this is one of the larger ones. I don't usually work this big. Uh, and this was actually a second attempt. The, the first one I didn't like uh, it was too light, but I, and this is Sumi ink on paper. Mm. So this uh, is a direct uh, ink drawing. This is, yeah. So uh, the thing that I'm going to be teaching at the, the workshop at the end of October um, but I, you know, I really like, uh, the quality of the black in that one. Um, you know, the first attempt, it was just a little too light, not quite as bold. Uh, and this is, the subject is a chicory, uh, bloom. Uh, chicory grows around here a lot too. It's also like one of those flowers like dandelion that's, uh, good for the environment. Um, Native Americans used it sort of the same way we drink coffee, but it has these beautiful blue flowers that close every night. And so I the, sum the Sumi ink, you work with a brush or a pen or how does it I work? I work with both, yeah. So this is brush and pen. So some of those smaller uh, buds, these are buds as we're going up the, the flower spike. Those are all done with uh, a bamboo like a reed pen. Um, pen. Yeah, like a reed pen. And the the um everything else was done with a, a brush, a sort of like a medium sized uh brush. so what attract what attracts you to the sumi? I like the um the spontaneity of it. Uh you know, I, I'm really not hung up on too many elements like um, matching the color or the atmosphere. It's really trying to get a feeling as well as a striking image. And I think the, the Sumi really allows me to do that when I work in that medium. Uh, it's quick, you know, I'm, and yeah, that was one of the praying mantises I did this summer. Uh, those are all over our farm, and they're uh, an indicator of good, um, you know, environmental health. And yeah, that, that poor blue jay actually was not in flight when he was oh. <laughs> found. And, um, you know, uh, I, uh, I painted his, uh, his death portrait, unfortunately. Mm. But, um, but it looked like he was in flight. He must have. Uh, it's still a beautiful drawing. Yeah. Um, and 
and that's the cicada. So this has a little bit of uh, tea on it. Sometimes with cyanotypes, if you want them to be a little bit less blue, you tone them in tea, uh, but this is not a cyanotype, just to be clear. I just thought that um, it might, it was an experiment. I wasn't sure how it would come out and I did like it, um, you know. I mean, you say tea as your drawing? Yeah, so it's, even though the, the, the cicada itself is sumi ink, so that's, and that was done mostly with the pen, uh, a little bit of brushwork. Uh, the, the sort of like brown tone is from, you know, black tea. The tannic acid in tea, I guess, is what pulls the, uh, the blue down, sort of neutralizes it in the cyanotype process. And then we also have some lino cuts. Some... Yeah, we do. That's, well, I mean, I used to do these all the time, but I haven't done them in a long time. Yeah, so these are all the same. Uh, there was a, I'm going to say this was actually a swallow tail, but the the butterfly itself was damaged. Like we found it um, outside somewhere. It wasn't alive. Unfortunately, I, you know, a lot of things that I find sometimes aren't alive when <laughs> they become subjects. There are also lots of live subjects, but. Um, but uh, natural imagery and landscape seems to be important. Yeah. Uh, I mean, especially, you know, when I was living in Philly, I kind of forgot, you know, um, about nature uh, and you know where I live now it's such a big part of uh, everything that we do you know we we spent spent a lot of time outside in our fields and um, you know certainly it's just out in this area it's just beautiful country um, you know scenes but it's it's always been important to me but it's become more important uh, probably in the past four years, four or five years since we've moved here. Yeah. And, so, you know, go ahead. I was going to say uh, living here. So the, the farm is a biodynamic farm. So no pesticides, uh, very little, um, you know, human interventions. And you get to see the, the life cycles, be, you know, happen before your eyes a lot more than in, I mean, I don't have a ton of basis for comparison, but, um, you know, I used to work in summer camps and stuff. So I see a lot of the cycle of, uh, you know, like insects consuming the, the plants and then, uh, you know, the metamorphosis that they go, th go through, um, you know, and. So you mentioned your workshop. So Sunday, October 22nd, you'll be teaching animal drawing with sumi ink. Right. So uh, you're bringing the animals, right? And I am bringing the animals, although John John is not coming. But, <laughs> <laughs> although he's so sweet, but you know, usually people are allergic to cats. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Perkita, my rainbow McCall is coming. She came the last time. Uh, a chicken is coming, a bunny, finches. You know, maybe some other animals, depending on <laughs> who goes and in the carrier. <laughs> you're going to cover the techniques of Sumi? Yeah, so we're going to, you know, um, and this is only my second time teaching it, but uh, last time it was fun. It went really well. And we're going to go over the techniques, a little bit of the history. Uh, and But for the most part, it's going to be a lot of, you know, uh, working from animal models, live animal models at the Cerulean Art Studio. And, you know, last time people brought home, you know, frame worthy things. So hopefully this time around the, the students will have the same opportunity. Well, that's great. It'll be a fun day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a beautiful show. Thanks very much, Amanda. Yeah, thank you guys. And uh, have a good night. Yeah, you, you guys do the same. <laughs>